Lately, I've decided to check out several applications that I can potentially use to keep an eye on my Linux servers. In a previous video, I decided to check out Rudder, which provides us with a dashboard that we can use to get the overall health of our Linux servers and also enforce compliance. But Rudder isn't the only solution available that allows us to do this kind of thing. We also have alternatives, such as Ubuntu's landscape, which is exactly what we're going to take a look at in this video. Specifically, what I'm going to do is show you how to install it. I'm going to set up the landscape server, and then I'm also going to join another server to the landscape server, so we can actually take a look at what landscape looks like when we go to use it. Now, before we get into that, I want to take a moment to mention the sponsor for today's video, which is Linode. Linode has been doing cloud computing since 2003, which is actually before Amazon Web Services was even a thing. On Linode's platform, you can get your server up and running in minutes, and they include all of the popular distributions, such as CentOS, Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, and get this, also Arch Linux. And let's be honest, what could be better than a Linux cloud server provider that allows you to tell all of your friends, I run Arch? Linode has multiple server plans available to make any app scalable and flexible. You can use it to host a blog, set up a VPN server, a Minecraft server, or you could do what I did and set up a website for your YouTube channel because the official website for Learn Linux TV runs on Linode. And Linode offers 24 by 7 365 support regardless of plan size, so you can get live help from a real person when you need it. New users can get started right now with $100 in credit towards a new account. And I highly recommend you check them out because Linode is awesome. And I would like to send a special thank you out to Linode for their continued support of Learn Linux TV. I really appreciate it. In addition to that, I would also like to let you guys know about my new book, Mastering Ubuntu Server 3rd Edition. I put a lot of work into this edition of the book, and it even includes some new content about AWS, Kubernetes, and more. So please check it out, and if you already have a copy, it would really help me out if you left a review somewhere. I would really appreciate it. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive into Landscape and get it set up. All right, so before we get started, just a few notes on what Landscape even is in the first place. And also, what do you need in order to get set up? What types of resources should you have available before you start this tutorial? So first of all, what is Landscape? Landscape is a server management utility from Canonical, the makers of Ubuntu. And you can use it to monitor and manage both desktop and server instances of Ubuntu. So, for example, if you work for an organization that has a mix of Ubuntu instances, and that mix could include but isn't limited to desktops, laptops, servers, cloud instances, you name it, you could basically bring all of those instances into one dashboard and manage them all from one place. And speaking of dashboard, it gives you a web dashboard, so it's very easy to use. And when it comes to the audience for my YouTube channel, you guys come from all experience levels, from beginners to experts and everything in between. So web dashboard is actually great for those that are starting out, or maybe if you work at an organization where you have different levels of system administration, maybe you have juniors and you have more senior professionals that are working on your team, then the more junior team members that you might have will love having a web dashboard that they can use so they can push packages to servers, monitor system resources, things like that. And thankfully, it's very easy to use. And there's two ways that you can get started. You can use Canonical's hosted version, which means that you wouldn't be responsible for the physical or virtual hardware basically keeping the instance online, since if you pay Canonical to host it for you, then they'll take care of the underlying infrastructure for you that powers landscape. But you can actually set it up on-prem as well, which means you can set it up on your own server, by adding a repository and installing the required packages, which is exactly what we will be doing in this video. So that's all well and good, but what do you actually need in order to get started, and what should you have available to go through this particular tutorial? It probably goes without saying, but you will need a server to install the landscape server component onto, and then you'll need at least one server for landscape to monitor, or basically manage, and the interesting thing about this, though, is that the landscape server should be on Ubuntu 18.04. Now, normally I recommend using the latest LTS version of Ubuntu, which is currently Ubuntu 20.04. 
But for some reason, the landscape server component is not actually available for Ubuntu 20.04 yet. I have no idea why that is, but as of the time I'm recording this video, if you were to try to install the landscape server component onto an Ubuntu 20.04 instance, then you'll actually run into problems. Now that being said, other servers that you manage through landscape can be Ubuntu 18.04 or even 20.04. So what I just mentioned about Ubuntu 18.04 only applies to the server component, basically the VM or the physical server where you plan to install the landscape server component onto. That's the instance that needs to be Ubuntu 18.04. But landscape is actually able to manage Ubuntu 20.04 instances as well because the agent package is available for 20.04, just not the server component. And the server instances that you use for this tutorial, those can be physical, virtual, VPS, there's no preference, and it can be any combination of those. On my end, off camera, I've created two servers to serve as the examples for this tutorial. The first one I set up, I set it up on Linode. And the instance on Linode is actually going to be the server instance. And the server instance actually requires two gigabytes of RAM for the landscape application to run. So I went with a 4GB Linode instance type, and the reason I decided to go with a 4GB Linode instance is because Landscape itself uses up to 2GB of RAM when it runs, and I wanted to make sure that there's actually enough RAM left for the operating system itself, so 4GB seemed like a good idea to me. And then I also set up an instance on my local Proxmox server here on my LAN. Now actually, I use Linode for all of my remote VPS instances, and I also maintain a Proxmox server here on my local network. And not just because I create tutorials on Proxmox, which I do, you should check out those videos as well. I actually like having a mix of remote and local instances. So I thought it'd be fun in this video to set up the landscape server on a remote instance on Linode and then have it monitor and manage a local instance on my LAN through Proxmox. And after you install Ubuntu server on at least two instances, there's a few more things that I recommend you do before we get started. And first of all, it's completely optional, but you might want to consider applying a domain to the landscape server. Now if you don't have a domain, and you don't plan on getting one, that's totally fine. But it just makes it a bit easier later, so if you are planning on using a domain, then I would recommend having that ready before we get started. Otherwise, what I'll show you later in the video is to work around the absence of a domain, by adding an entry to the Etsy host file. And you can also use a subdomain if you want to. Something like landscape.mydomain.com, that's totally fine. But I'll leave that up to you. Also, I recommend that you set at least the host name for your servers in the Etsy host file and the Etsy host name file. And that makes it a lot easier to differentiate one server over another, but actually it's a good practice to get into anyway. Now off camera, I went ahead and set the host names for both servers that I plan on using as examples in this video. And I recommend you do the same. If you don't already know how to set the host names of your servers, then check out this video. You should see a card in the upper right hand corner of the video that'll link you directly to a video that I've already done that walks you through the process of setting the host name on your server. In addition to that, I also recommend that you install all available updates for both server instances or however many servers you plan on using with Landscape. It's just a good idea to make sure that every server starts with the latest security patches, so I recommend that you install all updates and then reboot your server. If you don't already know how to install updates on your server, then check out this video where I actually go through the entire process. So with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Let's get connected. So ssh root at, then I'll paste in the IP address of the new landscape server. So there you go, I'm connected to the Linode. And I will open a new tab. And on the Proxmox server, the template that I have created actually has my normal user account of J built right into it, so I don't need to use root for that. All right, so we're good to go. So over here, I'm going to run a few commands to get the landscape server itself set up. So the first command that we will need to run is add 
apt repository dash dash update and then ppa colon landscape slash 1910. So you could pause the video if you need to. And again, I have the commands in the wiki article that's linked in the description below. But basically what I'm doing is I'm adding a new repository so that way the landscape software will be made available. And keep in mind, you will need to use sudo at the very beginning if you are not running as a root user like I am. And it doesn't matter if I leave sudo on there, but basically add apt repository and then dash dash update because we want to synchronize the package index right after we run this command. And then we are adding a PPA, which is like a smaller repository that contains the software that we need. So I'll press enter and then enter again to confirm. All right, so we're synchronized. So next sudo apt install landscape hyphen server hyphen quick start and then enter. Now notice that it's going to install 272 components here. So it's going to take a little bit of time for this to finish. So for this, we actually are getting prompted to set up postfix. That's beyond the scope of this video. We're not actually going to be using that. So I just press the right arrow and then enter to skip that prompt. And then for this, I'm going to choose no configuration because I'm not going to go over the process of setting up a mail server in this video. It's beyond the scope. I'll just choose no configuration. And then I'll let the rest of this finish. I'll fast forward yet again, and then I'll be right back. All right, so it looks like landscape has been installed on the landscape server. Now at this point, we're ready to go ahead and see if landscape is running, access the web interface and get it configured. But before we can do that, we need to be able to resolve to the landscape server. Now, if you have an actual domain name, it's highly recommended that you use that. For example, if you're using Linode, you can add a domain to Linode and then add an A record there because there is a built-in DNS manager inside Linode. But I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to open up a new terminal here on my laptop. Then in this terminal window, what I'm going to do is run sudo nano etsy host. Regardless of which operating system you are running, you should have a host file. We're just going to work around the DNS issue for now because the thing is, I don't know what DNS provider you might be using. There's no way for me to show you what the process looks like on all of the different options available for DNS in one video. But for our purposes, it should be pretty easy for us to go ahead and add it to the host file. And actually, I already did. It's the third line right here. I have the IP address for the Linode on the left and then landscape hyphen server on the right. This will make sure that I can resolve the host name for the landscape server. So what I'm going to do is go back up here. So we want to basically just copy the IP address for the server, paste it into a new browser tab, press enter. And we can ignore this warning right here because we didn't actually set up a TLS certificate for the server. So this warning is actually expected. So I'm going to bypass that for now. And now that has brought us to the landscape server, as you can see here. So just a few fields for us to fill out here. I'll go ahead and add my info. I'll type a super secret password. And that should be good enough. Sign up. And now we are successfully running the landscape server. As you can see, it's right here in the browser. This is running on Linode. And there's not a whole lot going on right here because we haven't even added any computers to the landscape server. So as we can see right here, we get 10 full registrations that we can use. So what that means is by default, I can add 10 servers to the landscape server. And that's exactly what I wanna do right now. So back down here in the terminal, I'm going to go to my local server, the Proxmox server. So first we should run sudo apt update, even though basically I just did this a few minutes ago. We just want to make sure that we're completely synchronized. And now we are. So next we're going to run sudo apt install landscape hyphen client. And notice that I didn't even add a repository. So again, the Proxmox server is running Ubuntu 20.04. And when it comes to the server component, there's a special repository for that. 
But the landscape client is actually built right into 2004, so we didn't actually have to add any repositories. So I'll press enter for this, and that'll get the client installed. It shouldn't take nearly as much time as the server component took to install. And in fact, it's going a lot faster. I can tell you that right now. And that's it. So now we have the landscape client installed. So the next thing to do is to point this local server to the landscape server. And the command to do that is kind of long. You might want to copy this from the wiki article or just at least pause the video after I finish typing it. So I'm going to just paste it right here to save some time. And here's the command. So let me walk you through this. So we already know what sudo does. We want to make system level changes. So we need to elevate our permissions. The landscape config command, we didn't have that before. But now we have that command available because we installed the landscape client, which is what gave us that. And then we have an argument for a computer title. I'm just going to call it file server. I have that in double quotes. Dash dash account name, standalone, a standard practice there, dash dash URL. So this is the URL to get to the message system on the landscape server. And this IP address right here is the IP address for the landscape server. So you'll definitely need to change that to whatever the IP address is for your server. Slash message hyphen system and then the ping URL, another argument. And then we're giving it a very similar path here. Notice that I have HTTPS on the first but not the second. And then the IP address for the landscape server again, slash ping. So let's see if it works. I'll press enter. So it's going to ask us a few questions. The first is just asking us whether or not we would like the landscape client to start on boot. We definitely should do that. And we didn't set a registration key, so I'll skip that. And then I'll skip the proxy URL as well because I don't have one. So I'll press enter for that. And then enter again to skip the second one as well. So the next question here is asking us if we would like to enable script execution. And if you want to be able to run scripts on your servers through landscape, you should enable this. Otherwise, just say no. So I will say no in my case. Then enter again. We are basically just accepting the defaults for everything. And then here, I'll make sure I say yes, even though that's the default, because I definitely want to make sure that registration goes through for this computer. So here I have an SSL error. It's actually complaining that it's a self-signed certificate, which we knew because we didn't actually generate a certificate for this server. And that's okay. But what this also means is that we will need to grab the certificate from the server and copy it down to the client. So to grab that certificate, what I will do is run SCP, then root, or whatever the username happens to be. There's the IP address. And then I'll type the path Etsy SSL certs landscape underscore server underscore CA dot CRT. And I'm going to copy that down locally. Let's see if that works. Say yes. And there it is. So what I did was I just grabbed the actual landscape server certificate CA. And that's the IP address of the landscape server. That's the path to the file that I want to grab. And now we have that file right here. But we want to make sure that it's owned by root on the target as well. So what we'll do is sudo chown root colon root and then the landscape server file. I'll press enter. So let's move that file where it actually needs to go. So sudo mv and then the file name. And let's move that into slash etsy slash landscape and then press enter. Then next on this same machine right here, we need to edit a file. So sudo nano slash etsy landscape client.conf. Then all the way here at the end, we're going to add SSL underscore public underscore key and then equals slash etsy slash landscape, then slash landscape underscore server underscore ca dot crt the same file so let's save this file here we'll exit out now adding the certificate file and editing that config file is only necessary if you get ssl errors which i did and this should solve that so now when i go to register this computer again it should actually work this time let's see i've already gone over these prompts here And as you can see here, system successfully registered. So if I go back to the browser, 
I have an alert. Let's see what this says. And I didn't even need to refresh the page. I'm not sure if you will need to refresh the page on your end. But it's telling me that I have one computer pending authorization. So I'll click on this. And here we see the file server. I'll click on that. Click Accept. And I basically just kept the defaults for everything there. And it tells me that the server has been accepted into the organization. And now that I have this server on the Landscape server, we can actually use Landscape to manage it. So we can look at the Activities tab here. And if we have any tasks that are currently running against the server, we should see those here. We can get information on the hardware on that server. And right now it's saying that it's not available, so sometimes it could take some time for things to get updated. So we'll let that go. There's a monitoring tab, and then there's a scripts tab. And then I have script execution disabled when I went through the defaults, but if you actually want to run a script against your servers, then you can actually just add your script right here and have that run. And now we're actually seeing some information here because it did say that it was updated. I see some processes here. So we know what processes are actually running on that server. And back here on the hardware tab, we can see now that this is filled in. On the packages tab, I'll go ahead and click on this. So we can see if, for example, Tmux is installed. And it's not currently installed. And let's see if that's true. So down here on the terminal, we can see that indeed Tmux is not installed. So let's go ahead and install it. So I marked Tmux for installation. And then I'll click Apply Changes. And now we can see that it's claiming that it's queued the package for installation. So down here in the terminal, we can see that Tmux is still not installed quite yet. It tells me now that it's in progress. And I'm a little impatient, but we can see that it's installed now. We now have Tmux on the system. So you can use Landscape to actually manage your servers. And to add a new server, basically what you do is you just repeat the process that I used for the file server. So basically you just install the Landscape client. Then you run the registration command. If you see an SSL error, then you just grab the certificate like I did and copy that down locally. Try the registration again and it should work. To add additional value to your Landscape server, you might want to apply a domain to it. Depending on your DNS provider, that'll change from one to the other, but it's something that you could look into. And you can also add an actual certificate as well if you'd like to avoid getting errors about the self-signed cert. So in this video, we've worked through the process of setting up our Landscape server and also joining a server to the Landscape server. And I hope this video was helpful in getting this set up for you. And let me know what you think in the comments down below I have more Ubuntu content coming, so make sure you subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I will see you in the next video.